So that is uh, my new beer called Fight Camp Light Lager. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. What's the drink? What's the drink right there? So that is uh, my new beer called Fight Camp Light Lager. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I've been like promoting that um, this training camp. All right, so this is a beer that you can drink during fight camp, right? <laughs> I don't really. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's some guys that uh, you know that would. Um, I've met like some guys that, like, well, obviously Conor McGregor, I think. Still, uh, you know, drinks alcohol and stuff while he's training, but um, right. it is it is only a hundred calories and it's a lighter beer, so there's less alcohol. But yeah, I still don't. Uh, I still don't drink during training camp. All right. So the the beer, like, how did it come to fruition? Why did you decide I need to have a beer? Um, it was something that kind of came to my mind, like once Conor McGregor had uh, you know proper twelve and stuff, and I just thought you know this is like the kind of the market. You know, most of my fans, you know, when they watch the fights, they like to have a beer or, or whatever. So uh, I knew that like my demography did well, you know, with beer and stuff. And I thought it would be cool to have, you know, my own kind of, kind of drink. So uh, yes, yeah, so I reached out to uh, New Ontario Brewing, and I've been working with them for like three or four months. Uh, so even before I had this fight, I was working with them, you know, working on kind of the flavor and the taste of the beer. And uh, yeah, luckily it just came out uh, before my fight. Nice, man. Nice. Hey, whoever's watching this, go out there and get you some of that beer, you know, but don't be in fight camp, you know, be be regular, be a regular yeah. person, <laughs> drink the beer, yeah. right? <laughs> All right. Uh, September 16th, man, you're back in action. Uh, Noche UFC, Fernando Padilla. Thoughts on him, man. Thoughts on the, the matchup. I think it's a great matchup. I mean, he's he's another up and comer. You know, a lot like my last opponent, Blake Builder, who was you know eight no undefeated, uh, had a lot of hype behind him. Uh, I think it's going to be the same with Fernando. Again, he's he's not undefeated. He's you know he's got a little more experience. At least fifteen and four. So you know he's been around a little bit longer. But again, this is his second fight in the UFC. And uh, again, I think I'm the underdog, but we're probably going to see something similar to my fight against Blake Builder. But, uh, you know, I've just been building on that. So I've got, the, you know, the cardio and the endurance and stuff to, to win by decision. But I think we're going to see me start to land a little more power in this fight. And I think I'll finish Fernando. All right. And, you know, when you look at Fernando, and like you said, he's, he's not as experienced as you in that octagon. You know, he's had one fight, one fight, and that's it against Julia Rosa, who is very experienced in the octagon. Were you impressed by how quickly he went out there and and – just pretty much dismantled a veteran. Yeah, so like uh, I know Julian, I've trained with him lots in Las Vegas, so I was paying attention to that fight. Even like when it when it, like I watched it live, I didn't know who Fernando was at the time, but because I trained with Julian, I was you know kind of tuned in for his fights. I thought like watching it live, especially, I thought it was a bit of an early stoppage. I know like Julian, he's that kind of fighter. You know, in the first round, sometimes he'll take a shot or two, maybe even you know stumble or get dropped. But then he comes back and kind of does his best work after that. So I feel like Julian was still kind of getting warmed up. But, yeah, I mean, Fran will still put on a good performance, you know, good accuracy, good boxing and stuff like that. Uh, so I don't want to take anything away from him on his performance, but I think maybe the ref stepped in a little too early. So, uh, I mean, we only saw how long it was, like a minute and a half or two minutes. So we didn't get to see a whole lot of Fernando, but he does have some, some tape from his fights before the UFC. So I've been able to, you know, kind of look him up and, and see what he's good at. How do you feel about fighting the the up and comers, man, and, and squashing the the hype, so to say? Yeah, I mean, I it's kind of what it is right now. You know, I've, I've been traveling into a lot of people's. Um, I mean, like I fought Jai Herbert in England, I fought Polo Reyes in Mexico. You know, I'm, I'm generally, like, you know, the away guy. Uh, but my last fight, you know, was kind of home turf. It was in Canada. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I've accepted that role right now. I know once I, you know, I've, I've just beat Blake Builder coming off, you know, the draw against uh, the Korean Superboy. But I think, it, you know, I've beat Fernando. He'll kind of take out another guy with a lot of hype behind him. And then we'll see me kind of start to climb the ranks a little bit. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'd love to fight somebody like Cub Swanson next, you know, kind of 
you know, get another veteran, someone that's been in the UFC for a while and start working my way up. The the matchmaking is somewhat interesting because you would think they would put veterans against veterans most of the time, you know, but mm-hmm. now it's just like they've really made it survival of the fittest with the matchmaking in some way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's, I mean, it's fine by me. I mean, as long as I'm fighting, I'm happy. Uh, but, you know, I do, I would like to, you know, eventually start climbing up towards, you know, the top 10 and then the top five in a title fight. But for right now, I'm more than happy just to stay active. Like this year, I've fought two times already. This will be my third fight in September. And who knows, maybe we could still, uh, you know, sneak another one in in December. Yeah, that, that would be incredible, man. And uh, let's go back to the last fight, man. You got a lot of praise in your fight against Blake Builder. He was an undefeated prospect, lots of confidence heading into this fight. You kind of stayed quiet and kept calm like you normally do, and and you went out there and and let your performance speak, and you shut it down, man. Looking back at it, re-watching the fight, what do you remember most about that performance? You know, kind of how like how calm I was and how I felt in the octagon. It's probably the best I've felt in any of my professional MMA fights yet, you know, going the distance, you know, the whole time there wasn't a moment where, oh, you know, I'm starting to feel tired or, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the fight going the distance or anything like that. I was always, you know, super alert, always that energy. I was always able to land the shots that I wanted and uh, it was just super comfortable. So I definitely think I'm, you know, kind of coming into my own in the UFC. I've got the, the weight cut and everything dialed in. So, yeah, I think now we're going to start to see, you know, the best version of, you know, Kyle Nelson. And now that I've got the confidence in that last fight, and I know I can go the distance, uh, you know, at a higher output, I'm going to you know, just continue to build on that and keep stepping it up, you know, start throwing a little bit more power, more output, and, and throw some more, you know, some more of my flashy stuff. And, you know, when, when fighters win, you know, they get all the praise and you get all the accolades and, and it's great to see. But when you lose, it's, it's pretty much the same, but in the opposite way, right? The criticism comes out, the fans are out there talking crazy, the talking heads of the sport are talking wild. Did you ever have that creep into your mind over the last couple of years, you know what I mean, with, with the obstacles that you had had faced? Uh, no, not really. You know, I've been in the sport, like uh, I've been in the UFC for like almost five years. Uh, I've been fighting professionally for like 12 years. So, and before that, a bunch of amateur and jiu-jitsu tournaments and stuff. And so, I, you know, I'm kind of used to, you know, the trash talk, you know, not only from opponents, but, you know, spectators or the crowd or fans of my opponent and stuff. So it's definitely something that, um, you know, doesn't really phase me. You know, I walked into the arena in, you know, Mexico, you know, to tens of thousands of people booing me and, and cheering for my opponent. I did the same in England against Jai Herbert. You know, the whole crowd, the O2 arena was going crazy for him and then, you know, booing me. So it's uh, it's something that, uh, you know, I don't hold a lot of weight to. I don't, you know, it doesn't really affect me at all anymore. Yeah, and then in your last fight, you got to do the uh, the total opposite and become the hometown hero, right? And you did your thing, man. It must – you probably still feel that momentum, right? You feel that energy from that from that last performance, do you? Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. You know, I mean, every fight I like to take something and, and bring it forward. But, yeah, something, you know, about the crowd there in, in BC that, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. Usually when I'm fighting, you know, I'm, I'm the away guy or something. So I kind of turn that off. Like I don't, you know, listen to the crowd. I don't really, you know, interact or do anything, you know, with the crowd. But in BC, you know, everybody was cheering for me. Everybody was, you know, so excited and happy, you know, that I was kind of able to let that, you know, let that energy, you know, kind of flow through me a little bit. Knowing now that you know all those people that were in the crowd there are going to be tuning in, you know whether it's you know online or watching on TV or something. All those fans are still going to be there cheering for me. You know they may just not be in Las Vegas. Your last fight was around a four month turnaround. This fight around a three month turnaround. So you're getting what you want, right? You're fighting more often. Um, how how does it feel to be in training camp right now during this time of year? Because you're Canada's a place where you get all the four seasons, right? It's a little different than a lot of other people. Yeah. Uh, you know, the summertime is the easiest, obviously, to get all, you know, my runs in and stuff because you can wake up and go outside and it's it's warm and it's sunny and stuff. Sometimes, you know, like preparing for the Korean Superboy, you know, it was I was getting ready in like November, December, January, like all those 
winter months where it can get pretty cold here in Canada. We do we get a lot of snow, you know, in the area I'm from. So it does make, you know, jogging outside a little bit trickier. You know, I still did a lot of outdoor jogs. And then, you know, you make up with it with jogging the treadmill and stuff. But, you know, I don't find you know, the treadmill jogs the same as the outdoor jogs. So definitely being able to get ready to get summer, I find, is a little bit of a benefit. And, you know, I've seen that you've done, uh, you know, a little bit of cross training during training camp. Have you done the same this time around? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm always trying to, you know, add new things, switch it up a little bit. Uh, like today, you know, I just helped a buddy, you know, in his backyard. So I was just shoveling dirt, you know, for four hours and running on wheelbarrows and stuff. So, so we'll get my strengths and conditioning in a little bit of a different way today. But uh, yeah, I mean, even you know, the lifestyle that I've lived my entire life, you know, growing up in a small town in Canada, you know, living on a farm. So, you know, getting hay off the field and, you know, you're always lifting heavy things, splitting wood. You know, riding four wheelers, like doing all this stuff that you know just keeps you active, keeps you in great shape anyway. So, I think, um, you know, a little bit earlier in my career, I got away from that. And I was like, oh, you know, I don't want to spend too much time, you know, picking up hay bales or you know, doing this or helping somebody shingle the roof because I got a fight coming up and I don't want to get injured or do this or pull a muscle. Whereas, you know, just, you know, the last year or so, I've kind of, you know, embraced, you know, what helped get me here, which was, you know, kind of working in the farm, you know, helping my buddy shine up a roof or, you know, dig a big hole or, you know, help do gravel or bring the hay in off the field. And I feel like a lot of that stuff is not traditional MMA training, obviously, but I do think it helps me kind of maintain my strength. And I think it gives me that kind of edge. I don't know if they call it farm, farm boy strength or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, who was known for that? Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes was known for that, right? He was yeah. known for that farm boy strength. That's uh, yeah. that. There is some kind of I don't know. There's something to that. There is right. Like even if you're in the weirdest positions, you 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 just form muscles in I don't know in weird spots. I guess and it allows you to uh, perform much better. Yeah. And you know, outside of that though, like anything else, like on the scientific side of the sport that you changed over the last year or so that you feel like it is benefiting me tremendously? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm always working with the Spore Lab here in Huntsville, and he's always, you know, dialing in, uh, you know, so we're always going over, like, I always do my cardio and stuff, uh, you know, just being a bigger guy at 145, you know, I need to do a lot of cardio to get down to 145, but then dialing in, you know, some of my sprints and stuff like that, and Tabatas and stuff, and we're always building off of that in each fight. You know, like three or four fights ago, I wasn't, you know, it was just the long runs. You know, I didn't really do a lot of sprints or, or interval training like that. Uh, but, you know, the last three fights, we've been adding it, adding it. You know, every fight, we had a little bit more time on the sprint or a little less recovery and, you know, always building on that uh, that system. Nice, nice. And, you know, in this fight coming up, man, I know you have to go to the States, but it's still pr pretty much the same distance, Las Vegas and Vancouver. From where you're at, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like the I think the plane plane flight's about the same, like five hours. Um, I think they're pretty similar. They're both you know on the on the west coast, but uh, you know I spend so much time in Vegas now. Like I was in Vegas like a month ago. Uh, I've trained in Vegas for you know several months at a time. Um, so Vegas is basically you know a second home to me now. I've spent a ton of time at the UFC PI and stuff, and fought at the Apex. So. Yeah, I feel like if there's if there's somewhere I have to fight that isn't going to be Canada, I feel like Vegas is uh, you know, the next best bet for me. Yeah, they have everything set up for you guys, right? From the yeah. from when you land, right? You could just go to do whatever the hell you want as a fighter, right? Like you could get, take so many benefits. You know, when you went to Vegas a month ago, did you did you uh, work with anybody in particular out there? Yeah, yeah. So again, I was back at I trained at Extreme Couture. Uh, so, you know, I got some rounds in with Julian Rosa again, who fought Fernando. So I got to, you know, pick his brain a little bit, you know, see what kind of surprised him about Fernando or what didn't surprise him and kind of what he did in his training camp to get ready for Fernando. And I feel like, you know, the game plan that me and my coaches had built was very similar to the game plan that Julian had built. Um, and then he gave me some insight that, you know, he kind of heard through the grapevine, through the and stuff like that. Like that. Yeah, it was definitely awesome. And then he's also like, one, he's a, he's got a taller, longer, one three five or so I got to, you know, train with that and that. So, yeah, it was definitely, uh, you know, beneficial. Extremely, extremely, man. And, you know, what what are you envisioning for this fight coming up? Like, what, what kind of uh, picture do you want to paint in that, in that octagon? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I want to continue to to showcase my skills. So in the Blake Builder fight, you know, I got to show off some kicks, some punches and stuff like that. But I still got, you know, a few tricks up my sleeve that I'm able to use in sparring and, and training camp that, you know, I can hurt guys and stop guys with, but I haven't had a chance to showcase in the UFC yet. So I definitely want to, you know, bring some of that. And then, again, you know, I'm some of my Muay Thai, the knees, the elbows, the jiu-jitsu, the wrestling. I feel like overall, I'm better Fernando. I think, you know, I can take the, take the fight places that I'm going to be better than him. I mean, standing, he's got the box, he's got good boxing. But again, in my last fight, my last fight, you know, Builder, you saw my boxing. You've seen my boxing against Jai Herbert also. Jai was also like six foot one and a tall, strong guy. So, yeah, you know, I think you know, I think, I think this is uh, you know a good a good fight for me, and we're going to see it's similar to the fight against Blake Miller, uh, probably with a finish. You mentioned earlier about you know if this goes well, December could be on the table, but there are rumors out there right now about the UFC returning to Canada early next year. Have you heard anything? So I haven't heard anything directly, but I have heard some of the rumors, um, and so obviously that you know will be you know great for me as well. You know, get this win in September, and then you know maybe even you know take a week or two off, relax, rest, and recover, and then get right back into a training camp for an early fight in uh, you know in the early 2024. Nice, and you know I talked to a lot of young guys coming up. You're going to be fighting a young guy, and they always talk about burning out their first UFC contract. For you, is the contract ever something that's in your mind as you prepare for fights or anything like that? No, no, not at all. Um, yeah, like it's, that's just one of those things that doesn't really cross my mind. You know, I focus on the fight at hand, and then when I'm not doing that, I'm focusing on family, you know, and, and you know, just living kind of my best life outside the sport. I don't like to get too much into the politics or the contracts or this or that. You know, I go in, do my job, you know, collect my paycheck, and then I come home and, and you want to focus on being a father and, and a, you know, a husband and all that stuff. Good being a role model, man. Thank, Kyle, thank you so much, man, for taking the time. September 16th, catching back in action against Fernando Padilla, UFC. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having me back on.